I recently became aware of BayesNets and Netica through a decision analysis class that I'm taking. Um, I found it to be very, very useful um, in that class, but I did notice some of my classmates were a little hesitant to pick up new software and incorporate Netica into their toolkit. So as part of my term project for the class, I decided to do a series of short tutorials to try to explain what's going on in Netica and help make it a little more accessible. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about what's going on under the hood mathematically. I think if you're uh, looking at a Netica tutorial, you're probably already familiar with Bayes' theorem and how it works. Um, so I'll just get straight on to uh, net construction. Today we're going to start with a very basic belief net. I'm going to start by clicking on this new net button opening up a new net. A belief net is going to be comprised entirely of nature nodes. There's no decisions here, there's no utility or reward. It's just a matter of finding the probability of an unknown state given this, the state of a known evidence. So I'm going to start with a couple nature nodes. I want this guy over here, and I want this guy over here. Okay. To open up the node, I'm going to double click on the header. I'm going to change the name. I'm going to name this one Fire. Its states are going to be true, new state, false. Got that. Um, next state, double click. Let's call this one Smoke. The states are also going to be true, new state, and false. Okay. Oops, I totally misspelled false, didn't I? Yes, not place, false. Uh, change that. Okay. We're going to leave this one aside. I'm going to incorporate that one later, but I want to start with a super simple two node system. Um, Going back into Fire, I'm going to click on this table, and I'm going to enter what's going to be known as our prior probability. Let's say I have a fire in my fireplace about 10% of the time. So every 10 days I rev up my fireplace, that's our prior probability without knowing anything else. Now I need to link these two. I have this parent and this child. It's a parent-child relationship because this node is influenced by this node, not the other way around. So I'm going to click on my link. I'm just clicking and clicking again to link those two. And now that I have those linked, I can double-click on Smoke, open, it that back, open that back up, go into the table. Now I have this grid. So I have fire state, true, no, sorry. Fire state, true, false. Smoke state, true, false. This is where it does get a little confusing if you just name everything true, false instead of like fire on, smoky, or something like that. Um, so let's say that when I have a fire in my fireplace, it's going to detect smoke. My sensor is going to detect smoke about 90% of the time. And when I don't have a fire in my fireplace, the the uh, sensor is going to detect smoke about 2% of the time. Say I, I'm a toast burner, who knows. Um, I'm going to apply that. Now, in order to use this for inference, I need to compile the network, which I do by clicking this little lightning bolt guy here. Boom. Now you can see I haven't entered an evidence state yet, so my probability of having a fire in my fireplace is still my prior probability without knowing any evidence. In order to enter evidence, I just click on the state. So when I clicked false, my sensor is not detecting smoke. Now this has changed to my um, posterior probability. When my sensor doesn't detect smoke, then the probability that there's a fire in my fireplace is only 1% and change. 
when my you know, I can unclick, re-click on true, and I can see the posterior probability for having a fire in my fireplace has changed again. Um, now let's let's incorporate our third state. So I'm going to double click on that to open it up. I'm going to call this one heat, and let's give this one three state. Let's say my sensor can sense high heat, medium heat, or low heat. Okay, now I'm going to link fire to heat. I'm going to open it back up, go into the table. Now I have fire to false, heat high, medium, and low. So I'm just going to make up some probabilities here. Obviously, if you're modeling a real system, you'll want your probabilities to be as close to reality as possible, but this is just an example. So let's say they, I have a fire in my fireplace. Let's say my sensor registers high heat about 90% of the time when that's true, medium heat, uh, let's say 7% of the time, and low heat 3% of the time. These should always, your rows should always sum to 100%. Um, when I do not have a fire in my fireplace, let's say I have a false high heat reading at 5% of the time, a false medium heat reading um, uh, 10% of the time, and let's say my sensor registers low heat when I do not have a fire in my fireplace, uh, whatever that is, 85% of the time. Okay, close that. Again, I need to compile my network in order to do inference. So I click my compile net button up here. Now I haven't entered any evidence. So again, we have our prior probability up here. Um, let's say our sensor does not register smoke, but it does register high heat. Our posterior probability then is, of having a fire in the fireplace is about 17%. If I go back and say my sensor does register smoke, then my posterior probability of having a fire in my fireplace is about 99%. Now one more thing I want to point out, um, you can just unclick to unselect or click to unselect states. Let's say that I'm not sure if I'm registering what kind of heat I'm registering, but I know it's not low. It's either medium or high. What you can do is shift and click for the state that you want to unselect. And that's that's just saying I'm not sure if my evidence says medium or high, but I know that it's not low. And it cal that calculates that way. Um, Anyway, this was a very brief introduction to belief nets. Next video will show you how to incorporate some decision nodes and utility nodes for a decision net. Thanks very much.